Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here and thank you so much for tuning in today and you'd be glad you did because I'm going to be having some fun today and hopefully you'll have some fun watching me replace the engine on this 2005 Honda Element. You might recall that I now have three Honda Elements, well actually just this one, I gave the other two away. I'll provide an update on those in another video, but in today's episode I'm going to be focusing on r and r in the engine in my 2005 Honda Element. Now the engine that I've gotten apparently came all the way from Japan, supposed to only have 40 to 60,000 miles on it, and this one I believe. However, they sent me an engine previous to this one which had orange RTV on the timing belt cover and on the oil pan, and that didn't inspire a whole lot of confidence because I don't really see replacing timing chains on these engines within 40 to 60,000 miles. So I sent that one back, they said okay, they sent me this one, I paid the shipping, and here we are. So let's get started on taking the engine out of this 2005 Honda Element. With an engine job like this, it's a good idea to have a plan and work the plan. Now, I believe there's a couple of different ways to get this engine up and out of here. And one of those ways might be to undo this core support here and take out the radiator and the condenser. And you would be able to take this whole thing out the front here. And also likely the front bumper would have to go with that as well. Uh, I believe that would probably be possible. However, I'm gonna take a different approach. I'm gonna remove the subframe and disconnect the uh, suspension and everything and drop the engine and transmission out the bottom onto the ground. I'm gonna leave everything attached, save that engine mount and this engine mount over here and undo all of this stuff to get there. Now, I'm not gonna cover it in great detail, but I'll give you the highlights as I work uh, so that you have that information. Mostly, it's probably gonna be a time lapse for undoing all this stuff. But I think what I'll do now is start by draining the oil and the coolant and such and working on that subframe that I mentioned that I was gonna remove in order to drop this out the bottom. This is the element that had its catalytic converter stolen and here's some remnants of that. Since that was already cut off, I removed the entire exhaust system because I'm gonna be replacing the entire thing with new along with new O2 sensors. This is the subframe. It sort of goes around the perimeter underneath here and it has the lower control arms and everything that are attached, the stabilizer bar and all of that. It also has two engine mounts, one here and one up in the front. And my intention is to uh, undo those engine mounts, undo the suspension connections here at these lower ball joints, drop this entire assembly down so I can drop the engine out the bottom as well. While I'm draining the engine oil and the transmission fluid, I'm gonna remove this drive shaft. And to do that, there are four fasteners up here at this uh, joint. There really isn't a need to remove the oil filter because, well, <laughs> the engine's coming out. But I do want to drain the fluids so that I don't have to deal with that. That oil doesn't look that old at all, sadly. I think the previous owner had mentioned something about just getting an oil change and then suddenly losing power from the engine. I'm not even gonna speculate on what caused that. This is the transmission drain plug. And I loosened the fill plug too. This splash shield's also gonna have to come out. Hey, free socket. Ha <laughs> ha. Yup. That's a 10 millimeter. Woohoo! I found gold. Hey, look, I'm a quick lube oil change place. Taking the fill out first for the transmission and then the drain. This allows air to get in here and drains better. It smells like gear oil, but I got burned on that. Could be sinker mesh, which is just fine. Axle nuts are 32 millimeter. Oh, I lied, they're 36. Looks like a fair amount of play in that ball joint. Getting a new to you used car and finding all the things that you need to fix. I'm draining the fluid in the transmission because I'm gonna need to remove the axles. I'm moving this thing around. I don't want the transmission fluid dumping out the axle ports. I'm gonna leave the fill plug finger tight, but I am gonna tighten this guy. All kinds of room without the exhaust in the way. Just over to the side like that. 
it's going to give me what I need. This rear engine mount has three fasteners, one there, one there, and one in there. And then the front mount has like a through bolt. So I'm going to remove those now. This nut on the other side hooks in in the front. These are all what appears to be the same length. To remove the subframe completely, there are fasteners here, 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 just these four. Now keep in mind, the engine and transmission are still held up by the side mounts up there. So removing the subframe, they're not gonna go anywhere. They will flop back and forth and you gotta be careful of that. But as long as those mounts are still connected, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. I haven't removed the last one yet, but these also appear to be all the same length. I don't think there are any wires or anything I gotta worry about here. I meant to do that. Tons of room in here now. Now we can get these axles out of here. Even though I'm taking the engine out, I have plenty of access when it's out of the vehicle. It's still gonna be beneficial to remove some of this stuff now, like this intermediate axle shaft. That'd be nice to get out of the way. Also, you can see some electrical connections that I can just reach up and get right now. I'm gonna leave the, uh, well, uh, four wheel drive. I'm, I'm not sure what to call this, uh, power takeoff. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this attached along with the rear engine mount. I don't see a need to disconnect those, but there are some other things like this front transmission or front engine mount, which is broken, unfortunately, that I should replace since I'll have it out. Looks like this rear one has already been replaced, but I am gonna need to get one of those front ones. I'll be able to disconnect things like this electrical connector here and some of this other stuff just to make life easier. Also, it looks like this bracket here could come out as well. Holds in the air box. Now with these intermediate shafts, two of these bolts have a shank on them and one does not. The two with the shanks go here and the one that does not goes on this lower part back here. Well, with those out of the way, you just pull this out. While we're here, let's get these electrical connections. So these three hold uh, lower support for the air box on, and they're all the same length. Another electrical connection, and the clips are already broken away, so that makes it easy. <laughs> they totally messed up this ground, though. Basically, I'm taking all these lower supports for the transmission off so that I don't have to do it while it's swinging from an engine hoist. I don't like the people that did this clutch. There's supposed to be a fastener here. Now the support that goes between the engine and transmission. Cross threads are better than no threads. Jeez. Seriously, people. Stop thinking about the money you're not making and start thinking about the job that you're doing. This is how it should come out. I swear 90% of the repairs that need to be done are needing to be done as a result of poor workmanship. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a good tap and die set. That was just run in with an impact. That makes me mad. Not that I've never crossed it in anything, but at least I owned it. <laughs> Fixed it before I sent it out the door. At least I think I did. Still, it's darn frustrating when I see it. 
I nailed him for a new flywheel. <laughs> Saw you coming, dude. There's more electrical connections and other things that I can undo up here, particularly off of the starter uh, to get things out of the way. Additionally, I'm gonna have to remove this AC compressor. I have a new drive belt, so I'm just gonna cut this one off uh, so I don't have to mess with the tension or anything. But like I said, I've got a new one, so it doesn't matter. And then uh, I'm gonna drop this AC compressor down. It's four fasteners. There's two up top similar to that. Now that was the way to get the knock sensor off. Well, good thing my engine came with a new tensioner. One well, on here sounds noisy. Don't want to forget to disconnect the compressor. <laughs> FYI, the AC compressor has a couple of like little hooks that hold it, so you gotta pick it up off of its mount in order for it to come loose. I had a really hard time getting that starter nut off because it's an aftermarket starter and that's 13 millimeter instead of 12, so I couldn't figure out what size went on it. Here's something interesting. See all this crud right here? That is shredded clutch. So I think this thing went off road, got stuck, blew the engine in the process, and then they ended up replacing the clutch and changing the oil, hoping that it would work out. Well, worked out for me. I believe at this point, I have the majority of what I need to do down here done. Save one thing. There's this clamp for the uh, lower radiator hose that's pretty much wasted that I'm gonna replace with a, a worm clamp, but I need to cut that one off. And I'm gonna make sure that the hose is loose so I can pull it off uh, when the time comes. But first, I'm gonna drain the radiator before I do that. But this way I'll have access and I should be able to get to this easily and cut it off, get it ready for later. Didn't hurt the hose at all. Just got the chunks. It's already starting to drip out so I know it's loose. And we're back, and here's the card inch. I decided it was easy just to take the intake manifold off and lay it to the side rather than try to deal with all those hoses and connectors. And honestly, I'll admit this, it looks like taking that intake manifold would make it easier to get to the starter. And I did a video about doing it from underneath and this might be an easier way. So you guys were right. That said, I have my seatbelt hooked up, but I also have my floor jack underneath here under that back uh, mount there on the transmission uh, just in case because it seems to want to go this way. Also, there was this plastic valve that was right here. I just removed it. I don't want anything, especially if it's plastic, near these straps. If this moves suddenly, that's game over. I've also gone around and put penetrating oil and broken loose all the studs for the last of the mounting points. There are just two remaining. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to drop this down on the ground. Now, my biggest concern, the legs for the 
engine hoist here, then I'm going to be setting the engine directly down on top of those. So I'm going to have to finagle it off of that. I also have to work my way around the AC compressor. It's going to be a dance. So I'm just going to lock you off somewhere and hopefully you'll be able to see enough of the action to get the gist of what's going on. But really, it's just the engine mounts that are connected now. Uh, of course you did that. It came out as the whole stud rather than the fastener. One out of two ain't bad. The strap is right on top of this nut and therefore it's almost impossible to get a socket on it. But this is really the only place I could find purchase over on this side. Keep your fingers out of stuff. Use a pry bar screwdriver to get into tight places rather than try to work it with your hand. You'll need your fingers for the next job. We're committed now. Believe me when I say, slow and steady is what's gonna win this race. It's a lot of weight and a lot of plastic parts that could break. And if you do hear crunching, stop, obviously. Having that jack in the back, super helpful. It's helping to steady the whole thing. Trying to keep it away from that AC compressor as much as possible. That engine is out of there. Always a mess, always. Welcome back viewers. I've got a lot I wanna to cover today. Let's go over it. First off, I know none of you will forgive me if I don't do something about this valve cover. And yeah, it's pretty gross. And I have to swap it over to the new engine because the new engine, well, has a different type of valve cover and a different type of dipstick setup. So there's no way I can avoid that. To that end, I'm gonna start with removing this valve cover getting it all cleaned up and prepped for paint. And that way I can paint it and let it sit while I do other work. Other work is going to include cleaning this subframe. There's a bit of grease and gunk that's built up on it. But more importantly, um, you might remember from my initial inspection that those bushings were wasted. So guess what? This is out and on the ground. There's no better time to replace those. So that's going to take a little bit of time. And as I said, I want to do a little cleaning on this maybe throw a little paint on the rusted areas as well, uh, just for good measure. Now, before I left yesterday, I took the opportunity with this open engine compartment to hit all the rust areas with some of this, which basically converts the rust into, well, makes it stop rusting is probably the best way to describe it. Without the engine in here, there was no better time to do that. So that has also been done. I'm also gonna need to order some parts. Now I thought it was just the boot that was bad over here, but you can probably hear that ball joint is totally done. So I'm going to replace that one along with this one as well. This one's not as bad. It's not really loose yet. It's just sort of wiggling around. So I need to order those parts. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this AC Delco starter. So I'm going to get a Denso starter and replace that. In addition to that stuff, all of this needs to go away and I need to basically make it mimic what's on this engine over here. So we're going to have to swap some things over, take some things off in order to get this engine ready to be installed into the element. Here on my workbench are those bushings I talked about replacing in those lower control arms. I'm going to take these and throw them in my freezer until I'm ready to install them. That will help shrink them down a little bit, make them easier to install. Now, I just went ahead and got new front stabilizer links, knowing that these are sometimes a problem. If they're not a problem, I'm going to leave the ones that are on there on there and save these for when I need them. Here's the part number for those. And here's the part number for the bushings. Same with these, these are the same. I've done a detailed video on these lower control arm bushings that I'll link in the description. Let's start by removing this valve cover. Do some of this cleaning now. I'm gonna eventually run this through my sandblaster and you don't want grease and gunk down in your sandblaster. 
I don't know what Honda's used to paint their valve covers with, but they've always sucked. At least it seems that way to me. And don't worry, I'll be using as many new parts as I possibly can off the new engine, which appears to have considerably less mileage than this one does. Kind of a surprise to see it looking so good down in there. There may be hope for this engine yet. I have new valve cover gaskets and tube seals for this. I keep things like this around. Every once in a while I need something like this and rather than trying to hunt it down at a parts store or the dealer, it's nice to have it on hand. Yeah, it looks surprisingly good in here. I'm, I was not expecting this. I was expecting to see much worse. So they took care of it. I just think they went off road at some point and as a result, uh, they blew the engine. Even this valve cover gasket with, this engine has like 180,000 miles on it or whatever. Even at this mileage, it's still pliable and that says regular oil changes. These get hard and crusty because, well, they don't get regular oil changes, but man, I honestly wouldn't feel bad about reusing this particular valve cover gasket because it came out so easily. Once again, before it goes in the parts washer, I want to be sure to get all the oil and everything off of it. I'm also going to take off this loose, if you want to call it paint, <laughs> and uh, set that aside before it goes to the sandblaster. These big chunks won't do the sandblaster any good either. <laughs> Really? You didn't want to live? Again, just jumping off. Just stay. This is brake cleaner. It works really good as a degreaser. Links in the description. And don't worry, before this is all done and painted, well, before it gets painted, it's going to get a nice trip to the parts washer and then another cleaning. This is going to take me a minute. But when it's done, it should be to your satisfaction. And mine for that matter. It is my car after all. It's easier to see over here without this light on. Believe it or not, that was working better than the sandblaster. Still gonna have to do some sanding on it, but once I dry it off, I'm gonna do that, get it cleaned up, prepped out for paint. Since I've got the pressure washer out, I uh, brought the subframe out and I'm going to hit all these areas with some degreaser and let that soak and then come back and clean it up with a pressure washer. I've cleaned it, I've sanded it, I've pressure washed it, I've blown it dry with compressed air and I've sanded it again and then I blew it dry with compressed air and then I hit it with degreaser again and then I blew it dry with compressed air and then I masked it off. This is about as much prep as I'm going to do. It's time to move on to other things. I've already got a couple of hours into this. This is one of the reasons why I don't do this kind of thing. But anyway, it's done and it's going to look better in the end. This is the paint I'll be using. I'll link it in the description. I like the color. It's good up to 300 degrees and Eastwood was kind enough to send it to me. I think this is a perfect way to try it out. Ooh, it's kind of shiny. It's got a little metal flake in there. That's going to look cool. Gonna let that coat sit, come back, do it a few more times until I'm happy. So far it's turning out pretty good. Pressure washer and degreaser. Here we are after two more coats since you last saw it. It's not perfect, but I kind of like the sparkly. I like the sparkly a lot. Well, I'm gonna get this inside and prep it out with new gaskets and such and get it ready to install in the new engine when it's time. After this thing dried out in the sun a little bit, I came back with a wire brush and hit some of the rusted areas to knock the loose stuff loose. Then I went over it with some prep spray which degreases things and everything else. I'm now gonna remove the lower control arms and then I'm gonna just paint the rusty spots. Not going for restoration here, just making it a little nicer, but it will be a little nicer. 
I think I've already mentioned that I've done a video about this uh, specifically that covers it in more detail. I think those might have been the easiest stabilizer links I've ever disconnected. And all four are the same length. I think these only go on one way. I also think they're marked left and right. Now, as I mentioned, <clears throat> I'm not going for restoration here, just making it look better. I'm using some of this. If memory serves, this is the hard one. And <laughs> you could probably get away without replacing these, but I already have them. Remember, they're in the freezer. I think I'm going to take a different approach this time, and I'm going to look for a drill bit to go down through here and basically cut this bushing. Once you get it split, it's all over. Fresh from the freezer. Cumbersome barely begins to describe this. This bushing was actually in, it just wasn't seated as much as the other one was, but it's in and I just checked it. So it's gonna work. I'm gonna move on to this guy now. I lied, I have all the tools out for this, so I'm just gonna do the other side. But see how this one is almost flush with the end here where the new one isn't? Well, I can't really explain that, but it still fits in there fine, so there it is. Here's a comparison of the two. Like I said, I think it'll work. I'm just, it's just ever so slightly different. While that paint dries, I'm gonna work on this other one. We gotta mark it before we uh, remove it. This way we've got hard marks where this stuff is supposed to go. I am tired of this. Well, that was easier. I just painted this one. I'm gonna let it dry, and I'm gonna work on that other bushing now that the paint is dry on that one. This guy is fresh from the freezer. You gotta be straight up kidding me. I'm gonna kill somebody. Seriously. What is your problem? Welcome back viewers. Yesterday was a challenging day. 
This morning, I'm gonna summarize and get back to it. As you can see by the carnage, it was a challenging day. And a lot of it came about because of these bushings right here on these lower control arms. In the future, I'm gonna handle these much differently. But the problem is, these bushings won't push all the way down in for whatever reason. And they don't sit like the old bushings used to. So the old bushings would sit like that and the new ones are sitting like this. There's some kind of inner sleeve in here that I can't seem to push on directly. And that is the main source of the issue that I'm having is that I'm not able to completely push this through because I just can't get purchase on the outer ring of this bushing to, to shove it through. In the future, instead of even messing with these bushings, which weren't bad, these bushings were fine. Well, well obviously not after I took them out, but these bushings were fine. So in the future, if I really, really, really wanted want to fix this, which this is the problem that I was trying to fix, this bushing is bad. I'm just going to replace these. If I'm going to do this in the future and I just want Honda bushings, I'm just going to swap out these bushings and leave these alone and not take these apart. That's the way I'm going to do it. However, I've decided to handle this uh, because I've already committed and I've already messed these up by just getting new control arms with new bushings and everything installed. I think it ended up being like 120 bucks or whatever for the complete assemblies with bushings installed. Would have saved me so much time and headache. I only planned for half a day for this yesterday. This and what ended up with the uh, valve cover ended up taking the whole day instead of just half a day. Anyway, that's how I would handle this in the future. Either new control arms or just replace these bushings that are bad. The other takeaway from that experience, however, is this uh, tool set, this ball joint tool set is way better than the other one. Like the other one, like everybody makes this ball joint thing. Like I've seen this under so many different names, it's not even funny. So this one here, I think is a power belt. But because this uh, Matco unit has this receiver down here that you can click these cups into, it makes it less like you need three hands. So if you do need a ball joint press, and you've got the money, I'd go for this one because of this right here. Here on this box is the old starter that was on the uh, engine, which I'm not gonna transfer over. It's an AC Delco unit. These are difficult to get to. They're underneath the intake manifold and I don't wanna have to mess with it. So now's a good time to replace the starter with the engine out of the car. They sent me this benchmark. I've never heard of it. I've never tried it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just nervous about it. I scoured the planet <laughs> looking for a Denso, which I could find online, but I don't have the kind of time to wait for that to show up. So I'm gonna, I've got a Bosch unit on the way. But I was, once again, disappointed in the person that worked on this before me because they cross-threaded this bolt as well as that other one going into the transmission. And of course I'm reusing the transmission, so I have to fix all those threads. Fortunately, I was able to find a replacement bolt for one of them but not for the other. But I still have to deal with all those damaged threads inside the transmission. I would very much like to talk to the person that did this and give them a very stern talking to about starting the threads on a fastener before running it down with their impact, because that just wrecked my day more. The replacement lower control arms won't be here until you know, a couple of days, unfortunately, but I can still transfer everything from the old engine over to the new engine and the transmission. And I can still get it up in the vehicle because I don't need the control arms to put the cradle back up in place and hold everything in. So it might get back in today and it might run. I don't know, wish me luck. But before I get started on that, it's time to clean up this mess. One of the things I consider a success from yesterday is this valve cover. Now it did take longer than anticipated and I thought about this last night and I'm thinking that what the finish that was on here was actually a powder coating and that's why I had such trouble with it in the sandblaster. And I think what happened is the metal started to corrode underneath the finish and that's what caused the issue. But I do have some of these marks here that I'm not exactly happy about, but you know what? It looks way better than it did and I'm happy with it. It's time to move on. I'm cleaning up and I, I wanna show you something. <laughs> Check it out. It's installed correctly. Also installed correctly. What did I do? So I'm putting this tool away and guess what I found? <coughs> this attachment that I didn't know was there that was under stuff. This fits on here perfectly. It, it's like this was made to push bushings in almost. <laughs> well, that means I'm gonna move ahead <laughs> with redoing these bushings, send back the control arms I ordered, 
we might have this together today. Anyway, so this tool is the key to doing these bushings, apparently. Remember the marks that I made to correspond with the bushing? Well, I've transferred those marks onto here so I can get the bushing pressed in exactly like I wanted to. The orientation is very important or else it's not gonna be able to work properly. That went a touch too far. There's one. Now, the other one went in a little bit sideways, but you saw I just sort of played with the vise a little bit and got it to go through. Here's the other bushing. I've already marked it on both sides. I'm gonna press it out, press a new one in. I've gotten it started with a rubber mallet so that it stays in place, but I believe I have it orientated correctly. This allows me to check things to make sure they're correct. Still looks good. This bushing refuses to go in straight. <sighs> Looks good. That seemed like a lot more trouble than it was worth. I still stand by my just buy control arms with bushings already in it or just replace these. But even these gave me some trouble. Anyway, I'm gonna take these out back, uh, clean them up, degrease them, and then paint them, get them ready for installation. <laughs> Let's finish off this suspension work and just be done with it. Remember these floppy ball joints? If you're wondering why I'm putting the nut on backwards, it's to give the forcing screws something to push against instead of the end of this. By the way, Honda wants to sell you this whole knuckle assembly for this ball joint. And they're very proud of it. I've discovered that I'm gonna mix tools. So this is from my original ball joint press kit and this is that new one that I'm liking so much. Really? <laughs> Man, I, I, I just can't win. For this to just push through, that's just, it's never happened. So yeah, the whole joint, if you wanna know what the inside of a ball joint looks like, there it is. In fact, I can probably peel this off and pull this through and then I'll probably have to get the air hammer and knock the rest of this out. Just gonna spray some silicone spray on the boot. That way if it comes in contact with a bore, shouldn't bother it. Gonna use the other tool, the non-OTC one, or I'm not sure who makes this, to install it. Excellent. There's a part number I'm using. I'm using these TRWs. I am happy with these. I've used them in the past and they work well. I run this all the way down to the end of the stud or else. That is how it should have worked. That's job done. Because I wanted to add a little bit of bling to the valve cover, I just went in with my angle die grinder and a Rolock disc and made that. I think it makes it look snazzy. Well, viewers, I'm gonna have to call it here. This is gonna be the end of part one. Part two will air next week, unless you're a premium member. I have the full video available for them over on my website. I'll put a link in the description for more information on that. I will also link in the description tools, parts, additional information and additional videos about Honda Elements. So if you have any questions about anything you saw in the video, please check the description. Also, if you have questions that weren't covered in this video, I ask that you head to ericthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you again with part two. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. See you then.